Today, guys, we are going to talk about one of the most wonderful legends ever, and that is the story of the Minotaur. Now, the Minotaur is this creature that has the head of a bull, but the body of a human. So, a human body and then the, uh, uh, the head of, of a bull. Why and how was the Minotaur um, born? How did the Minotaur born? And, and why and how uh, did he take uh, those uh, traits? The story is sort of simple. Uh, Zeus, we all know Zeus and the many loves and lovers of Zeus. Zeus has takes up at a certain point a lover. Uh, that lover is Europa. Europa um, who gets pregnant and has more than one child with Zeus. However, we know also that uh, Zeus cannot really, you know, um, display all of those children around, otherwise it would die by the hands of uh, his wife. And therefore, uh, the children are adopted. One of the children is Minos. Minos becomes king of Crete. So Minos becomes king of Crete and in him, um, we have like sort of uh, divine power, not to the point that he can perform or cast spells or perform any sort of magic or or cast spells or things like that, but he is important in the pantheon. He is respected. And Minos asks uh, Poseidon, uh, the king of the sea, uh, to have a bull, specifically to have a white bull. Uh, poison sends him uh, over, sends the bull over, and uh, Minos falls in love with this bull. Not in the um, romantic sense, but he likes the bull so much that he decides to pardon him. So the bull was supposed to be sacrificed, and in reality is pardoned. However, there's another person that falls in love with this white bull, and that person is Pasiphae, that is, aka wife of Minos. And Pasiphae asks Daedalus, who's an architect, for help. Um, she has Daedalus create uh, this uh, um, wooden cow where she um, can wait for the bull and has intercourse with the bull. The ancient uh, Greece were pretty open, especially in their mythology. Um, she can have sex with the bull, and from this uh, union, the Minotaur was born. Now, the legend narrates that um, Poseidon um, is like upset over um, the birth of the Minotaur, so every other sort of normal average divinity is. And all of this falls on the shoulders of the Athenians. The Athenians are the ones who are blamed for it. So the story goes that the Athenians are the ones who have to pay for this crime. The way they pay is by sending seven young uh, women and seven young girls every nine years. At the point, uh, the king of Athens is Aegeus, and Aegeus has a son. The son is Theseus. Um, Theseus is a brave young man who decides to live for this mission, and the mission is to save everyone. So it is with the help of the woman whom he falls in love with, Ariane, that um, he is able to defeat the Minotaur and uh, uh, get his way out of the labyrinth where the Minotaur is um, secluded and confined. So he defeats the Minotaur, he has found love, the story could end here. It would be a perfect ending, a perfect mythological ending. This uh, is, however, the only hero who is apparently very, very distracted. I don't know what's up with Theseus, but what we know is that, number one, perhaps he abandoned his lover on a different island. So this is unclear. Either he abandoned her 
because they stopped in this island Nassus, which is where um, Ariane is believed to have been left. Uh, or he has, um, you know, sort of an affair with somebody else who's named Lena. Anyway, one of the three different versions or situations occurred, but um, Ariane is lost. We don't know anything anymore. They don't get married. So they, they loved each other, but that was to save all the people there and then that's it. Nothing else happened. The second point of destruction is that there was a promise that Theseus made to his father, uh, to his father, Aegeus. Um, and the promise was to live with the um, black flag but if he had been able to defeat uh, the Minotaur, he was supposed to change the flag from black to white. He forgets about that. He just he's convinced when he sees the boat, when he sees the flag, is convinced that his son has died, commits suicide, throws himself into the sea, which is called the Juice Sea nowadays. So Theseus is kind of like the the most wonderful young man who defeats the Minotaur, but also this incredibly distracted and kind of uh, uh, cumbersome uh, sort of hero, which is not typical for Greek mythology. Anyway, that is the whole story of the Minotaur. Now, the Minotaur has taken different meanings and balances in history because others have interpreted him in many different ways. So my question to you, I guess, is what do you think the Minotaur stands for? If it is a mythological creature and he has to be there to symbolize something, what do you think is um, the symbols he stands for? What do you think the Minotaur represents? So let me know comment of course below. I am looking forward to reading all your comments and we'll talk some more next time in a new video. Bye guys! Bye!